paparazzi call braid by a 10 or 15 flash shot by the kid. And I was completely shocked, of course. And he started running away. I said, hey, wait, wait, come back. What, what, what was that all about? What are you doing? I said, paparazzi, dude. Your movie raises a lot of questions. Uh, do celebrities have a right to privacy? Mm -hmm. Does the fact that you're successful and not a successful TV show mean, sorry, you're ours. Mm -hmm. we I'm pointing a camera at you now. We, Free, you know, uh -huh. this is it. What is, what is the right of a celebrity? Um, well, it's undefined. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think that, you know, part of the film is about sort of figuring out what role we all play in in that whole sort of blob, which is the media experience that we all contribute to. What's the number? <laughs> Hello? Look out the window. Okay. Look out the window, she's right there. Who is? Her. <laughs> oh, her. Oh my God, please don't wave. Why not? I, I don't know. Oh, she's a tiny little nothing. What? I can't see her anymore. I can't see her anymore. I'm going upstairs. Don't lose her. Jill, she was here. What? She was standing in the living room. She was freaking. Where'd you go? Are you there? Oh. By the gate. She's all by the gate. Michaela's gate. I can't see her. Are you there? If Carmela and Nurse Jackie were going head to head, <laughs> who'd win? That's a good one. Win. That's a good one. I um, come on, you know. Carmela might have to back out and get you know she get help from her husband. She would do. She would. Yeah. <laughs> she I would think definitely Jackie's have used to, to doing do that. working solo. I'm John. Paul. On a beer. Oh, I'd love a tea. Is there any tea left, please? There's no tea left, John. No, didn't think so. So, did you watch us play? Yeah, yeah. Hmm? And? Yeah, you all right. <laughs> so now the collaboration between the two of you. I, I understand I'm congratulating you both. There's yeah, a baby you. coming. Yeah. Do we know when? Uh, yeah. We know when. We, we yeah. know, but I'm never going <laughs> I have to be in the dark over this. We'll tell you after. Okay. <laughs> what, what if you don't want? I mean, I don't want that. I mean, what if you don't want my calling? I think you should try this gift. Yeah, but what about my music? That's my calling. There's no difference between you being a musician and healing. What are you talking about? What am I supposed to do? Go around yeah. touching people? Why not? And why, be a DJ? Why not? Chris, as well as you, you, at the early part of the decade, had a paralysis, right? I, mean, I it had was a brain tumor. Brain tumor. And that left me with a paralysis. Yeah. So for a couple of years, you didn't know what was going to happen? For about 10 months, uh, waiting for my, my face to start moving again, I, I had no, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? Mm -hmm. You know, I had a baby, uh, you know, a, I had this big life. It was, I was on the cusp of a career. Mm -hmm. I just come out, I was here with You Can Count On Me, and a year later, I'm, I have a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I didn't down into the dark night of the, Soul during yeah. that. How could you not? Exactly. It was, it was like my whole life was all I wanted to do is be an actor. And who wants to hire a paralyzed, an actor with a paralyzed, half of his face paralyzed? One day my, my face moved. It was literally like, you know, I, I couldn't even close my eye on the left side. And one day I was like, and I was looking in the mirror. I was in the car. I was looking in the, in the side view mirror. My <laughs> wife was driving. I was like, I, it moved. It was like, <laughs> It was, it was literally like, I don't know. Thank God you didn't miracle. crash the car. Yeah. You know, that's all you would need. If I was move. driving, I would have crashed. Yeah. It was, it was the most remarkable, miraculous thing that had ever happened to me. Literally, and I just barely twitched. Oh, ice cold. Spike was yapping and over on the sideline. He started to give it to me during game two of the series. <laughs> I'm kind of looking at him. And, he was bringing Cheryl into it. Hey, Cheryl can shoot better than that. I have never, ever, ever, ever derided Reggie with the, the chant, Cheryl. Cheryl. 
Cher, or you tried to psychologically turn Spike Lee, the biggest Knicks fan in the world, <laughs> into a groveling mess of jelly. I think I did a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. I think I did. No, I mean, look, we were taking on the big bullies on the block in the New York Knicks, mm -hmm. coming from Indiana and being the pacer. So we had to do something. But your dear friends in real life. Dear? Dear. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say dear. I would say we're cordial. If he walked in right now, he would probably shake everyone's hand and then probably shake mine. He'd probably shake your hands before he would shake mine, Peter, right? No, not after no. my review of his last <laughs> one. <laughs> Peter, I'm starting to like you more. Every minute this interview goes on. Oh, there friend. you go. There you go. Well, I, I mentioned before that Spike, though, does think that he deserves an Academy Award nomination for his performance in, in Winning Time. Like I said, this would be his first. <laughs> this very, this would be his, his first. first. So when things happen, like the show gets pulled, moved to that time slot, moved to this time slot, ratings go down, ratings go up, and you know, okay, what does this mean? You know, does this really affect me? Do I have any control over this? And I have to say, this season, season four, is my favorite season. We've never had lower ratings, <laughs> but I've never been more proud of the show. I spoke to her a few days ago, she didn't mention you. That is strange. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe she just forgot. Well, that's unlike her. She usually tells me everything. It's just odd she didn't mention you at all. Well, I hope she mentions me the next time you guys talk. <laughs> you know, you're right. Let's give her a call. I'll get the phone. When I was a little kid, I was obsessed with horror movies. And I was specifically uh, obsessed with the 1930s, like, the Frankenstein and Dracula, that vintage, some of the uh, Hammer, like Christopher Lee, Dracula, James that stuff. Yes, very sort of gothic, and I love that stuff. So there's something in me that responds, and there's certain that that tone is in this movie. These are jokes over the last 30 years. These are just, every time I, I write a joke, I try to remember to get it on a card. We're here in Sundance all these days, and you know it's known for swag. It's just there's yes, nothing. There's yes. thousands of freebies. Yes. And Sheila here has come and gotten some of these samples to just show you. Oh, Sheila, I wanted to see I, if I it was crap or not. Oh, to know what you think I'm of some so of this. So excited! Stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Look at this. So this Everything is, looks good to me, Sheila. I'm Jewish. I think this is <laughs> supposed to be some kind of wallet. It's a wallet. <laughs> okay. It's nice for credit cards. <laughs> So <laughs> um, this is, well, this is kind of cute. It's for charity. And it's a child's drawing. Yeah, that's sweet. Would you wear that, Joan? Never. Yeah. yeah. This is fabulous. I think I it know looks kind of like a hug. tablecloth. Yes, you know? it does, but it doesn't matter. Here, look at this. You take it and you wrap it. Here, you can wear that, and then you can put this around. Okay. Come here. Oh. Like a sarong. Oh, now, okay. I would take off this arm, this Purple schmata and this crap. <laughs> Everyone is missing what this is about. Free.